to. Um, yeah, obviously, Steve is a friend of Eddie's, and um, it's awesome to have him here in camp with us um, leading up to this France game. So uh, we know the experience that he's had with the All Blacks and obviously winning World Cup. So um, he's just here to give us some feedback on how we can improve our program. So it's, it's good to have him here with us. Yeah, like uh, Robbie was saying, he's a great friend of Eddie's and um, to see him in, in here and, and, and trying to help us in, in ways where we can improve uh, leading up to this World Cup. Um, it's great, you know, we've already seen him in, in the leaders' meetings uh, with the boys and I think um, just having his presence around here and especially our training uh, lifts the boys and, and, and I'm sure we're going to take away a, a great deal of of what he has to say and, and do in this in this week. Uh, so of course the, the questions were wondering, uh, especially here, is it, is it just for a few days or is it for, for more, for more few weeks? Uh, yeah, I, could, I couldn't tell you. I, no, yeah. Yeah, it's a, just, a, just a few days, Patrick. Just okay. a few okay. days. That's okay. Fair enough. And the last thing about, uh, about the last uh, 12 week, it's what do, you, what do you think about the reaction of Dan, Dan Cole? You know, when he when he said when he knew about Steve Hansen, uh, his decision to, to help the Australian team, and he said apparently like something like, uh, "Sorry for the conversation, it's gobs make it." Gobs smack. Oh, gobs smack. Gobs make. Sorry, yeah. So, what do you think about this reaction? Yeah. <coughs> um, you know, I think it's. He's obviously had a relationship with, with Steve Hansen as their coach for All Blacks, so it's not really surprising, but um, there's not much we can also uh, do about that. We're just obviously real grateful that we can have him here with us to provide us with feedback and help us improve our program for leading up to the World Cup. OK, back to rugby, of course, and competition. Uh, are you where you want to be uh, today? Uh, Talking about your label uh, before, before, before the, world, the World Cup, two weeks, uh, two weeks uh, at the beginning of, of the World Cup, and uh, especially because you had uh, bad results and four defeats. Yeah, I think um, obviously we, we play each game to win, but I think if you watch our games closely and, and internally, we know we're heading in the right direction and um, we're putting you know, a good performance in in the first half, especially the last game in Dunedin. So I think um, we're, we're trending in the right direction. And, and like you said, said, it's a World Cup. So uh, we'll go game by game. And I think it's whoever improves the most and can get into those uh, those quarterfinals and semifinals, you know, with everything humming. So, uh, yeah, I think, you know, we're obviously with four defeats, but um, internally we're, we're happy with the way we're trending. And, um, you know, Everyone's going to see that in the World Cup. So for you, your your target for, for, for the team, for all your all the member of the team, it's to, to go to the uh, quarterfinals and the final final and win win the World Cup in France. Yeah, of course. Yeah. That's why we're here, you know, um, and that's why we play. It's the biggest, I guess, stage um, for for all the boys here, and um, we didn't come here just to to take part, you know, so we're, um, yeah, and I'm sure like that's every team that's a part of this is, is gunning for that, so it's no different for us. About France, of course, the next, next match on Sunday, uh, how important is it for, for you, uh, two weeks before the, the World Cup, and about the France team, uh, what, what are the main uh, strengths of, of this team, of this France team? Yeah, I think for us, it's a, obviously it's another game for us, so another opportunity before World Cup. Um, our last sort of, I guess, warm-up match leading into that first game against Georgia. So it's a chance for us to put everything that we've been doing in training um, into the match uh, against France. And um, obviously France with DuPont, um, he's running nine and he's been in form for a uh, good amount of years. So obviously, we know their forwards are very big as well, so uh, set piece and a lot of kicking. So um, we know 
they got a lot of strengths, uh, so we're prepping to do our best to, to come away with the result come Sunday. And for you, the uh, both players, especially of course, who are thinking about uh, Antoine Dupont, uh, do you have any uh, specific uh, focus on players, French players? Uh, yeah, I guess uh, you look at your, your opposition and, and who you're playing against. So. Um, Obviously, in the back line, you know, you got uh, Fuku and uh, Joe Dantu, who's, you know, they're, they're good ball carriers and they get over the ball well. So, um, yeah, and then you got the, the athleticism of their back row. So, um, look, it's going to be a good match. And like Robbie said, you know, we want to put all, all the things that we've done in the last few weeks at training um, in this match before, before the World Cup. So, um, it's exciting and, you know, we, we're definitely going out there to win that game as well. Uh, online, Nathan or Tommy. G'day boys, um, congrats on being in your first World Cup squad. Can I just get your stories of how you found out and who your first phone calls were to let them know you're going to be down to France? Um, yeah, my phone call was obviously a bit daunting, you know, like sort of just waiting for it the whole day. We got told, I think it was the Tuesday. Yeah, Tuesday. After training, yeah. yeah. After training. Um, so we sort of just hanging by the phone. So I was just in the car going to lunch and then um, got the call. I was in the car with one of my mates in Melbourne. So, um, yeah, just was real stoked to obviously make the team and, and watching previous World Cups at home growing up. So um, it's awesome to be here, with obviously with La as well. Um, and obviously the first people I told was my family, mum and dad and uh, my brother and my two sisters. So. Um, Mainly for my dad, I think it was, it's always been a dream of his and also mine to be here, so I'm just grateful to be here. Yeah, for me, um, where was I? I was in the car with uh, my partner and the kids were off uh, to go see my dad. He was on break at work at the, uh, at the chicken shop, so I um, got out of the car and, and got the phone call from Webby, and, uh, which, was, uh, which was special and, and took a time. Took a, a couple of minutes here um, to myself just to kind of reflect on what it actually, you know, that phone call meant, and then um, you know having my family there, and then seeing my dad straight away was um, was was special, and, and it kind of sunk in then because obviously, like Robbie said, uh, we just finished the TRC, and then um, had training hubs, and you know all the boys, I guess that day were a bit nervous and. And, and waiting for that phone call. So um, yeah, to get that and, and to be surrounded by my family was uh, was special. When you say a chicken shop, uh, what is your old man do? Um, my old boy is a floor sander, so he snuck out of work because uh, I hadn't seen him for a while. So um, shout out to Freshy Chicken Shop um, <laughs> down Manly. there in Manly. So <laughs> um, we went down there and, and grabbed the feed together and and let the kids run around and um, yeah it was a special moment because I just got told I was going to my first World Cup and um, so we just sat there and, and, and chatted about you know what, what it took to get there. Um, did you think you'd be more of a chance you know in a wider squad obviously with the injury to Samu as well which is unfortunate and how do you think that paves the way for you this week it probably seems like he's a little bit off maybe for this week. Yeah look obviously um, just being in the in the squad's great, but you're obviously striving and you're wanting to, to play and, and whether that's in, in the starting 15 or the 23. So um, with Samu, look, you know, he, he's dominated for for many years now and, you know, he's obviously been, been the form 12 and, and rightly so. So for me to come in, um, I've had to buy my time and, um, you know, it's unfortunate that, you know, he's, he's got an injury at the moment, um, but, that allows me, I guess, you know, to, to hopefully get some game time and and um, contribute to this team because trying to contribute uh, off the field and, and at trainings, you know, you also want to do it on the field. So um, yeah, look, it's um, it, and again, it's awesome to to pinch ideas off each other and, and to learn and, and to grow together. You know, it's not like uh, obviously fighting for competition, you know, for the jersey, but we want to help each other because uh, it's, there's a bigger picture here. 
Can you talk us through that roller coaster of the last match you played in Paris? You know, score help score a try from the end of the world, silence that crowd, and then an injury, and then you're on the flight home the, the, the next day almost. Um, what a weird day that was for me. Yeah, it was. Um, looking back on it, you know, it was a bit surreal. Playing, playing that game, you know, running out in that stadium, and then uh, obviously um, getting that try, and and all the emotions and, and everything were really high. But then um, that injury struck, and and then uh, yeah, it just it just changed. You know, the boys flew off to to Italy uh, the next day, and and I had to fly home. So um, it was bittersweet. You know, I, I really enjoy, I love being around this group and. And obviously playing, so um, it was a roller coaster. Obviously, you know, one of the highest highs, you know, in my career playing in France against France, and then um, being on the on the next flight out back to Sydney that next day. So um, yeah, it was it was tough. Just the last one for you, for me, Malachi. Um, the Australia came so close, then after winning that match, a lot of people probably didn't think you guys would go that close over there in such a hostile crowd. Does that give the guys who were there that night a bit of confidence this week? Um, you guys have been there, done that, sort of had a dress rehearsal last year. And but generally, how much emphasis is being placed on this game? Is it absolutely imperative to try and get that win for confidence before the World Cup? Or is it just still getting things, you know, coming before that Georgia game? Yeah, I think the boys that were there last year and, and and witnessed and, and was a part of that, um, felt the crowd and how hostile it could be. So, you know, I think it's probably going to work, you know, in boys' favours. And then in terms of, of this game and what we want to achieve, it's obviously win. Um, I think we're slowly putting things in place at training and, and you know, we want to see that on Sunday. And, um, yeah, we, we want to showcase and, and obviously give give our fans and supporters back home, you know, something to cheer about and and, uh, and a bit of hope for us to lead into that World Cup. So um, it's a big emphasis, you know, we're not there just to try new things and, and uh, see what happens and hopefully pull it off. We, we're going there to, to front up and and to showcase it and play, you know, what we want to play is uh, Wallaby Rugby. A question for either of you guys. Um, you know, it's a quite a unique experience to be able to play the World Cup host in their final game before the World um, before the tournament kicks off. You know, being based in Paris, do you guys get that sense of the the hype around the World Cup and the country getting behind what's going to be an incredible tournament? Yeah, I think you do. I think <clears throat> being in Paris, you know, uh, France obviously going really well. Um, I think they're second. Um, so yeah, they're obviously one of the top teams yeah, and you can see um, how influential they are when you go around the city and um, obviously the bill of boards with the World Cup. So we know it's massive and it's going to be a big occasion. So um, yeah, you can definitely feel it's a different feeling right now uh, this time of the year. And uh, we, yeah, we're just excited to take part and um, to do a job and to, to make our supporters proud. Thanks Rob, for yourself, like coming back from the back, um by the bench, having missed the entirety of Super Rugby due to that injury, but what's, I guess, what's the feeling like just to get that consistent minutes? I guess the second part is how does that competition in the back row really kind of spur on sort of that training levels just to find that next level as you guys keep pushing each other? Yeah, I think it's, for me personally, it's been really good because I haven't played any Super Rugby this year, so uh, finally getting the team train with the boys when I joined camp took a bit to sort of find my legs and you know test for the lungs as well um, but yeah just obviously just trying to repay the fate to Eddie and obviously the staff when they picked me to come on the bench um, just been ha happy with the minutes I've been getting and trying to build um, to get back to that top sort of form and uh, be able to contribute to this team and get some wins on the board uh, leading into the World Cup and obviously yeah the back row as well um, Real young back row as well, so um, all, uh, real versatile, obviously, like Bobby, uh, Fraze, uh, Kemeny, who's also a utility as well, um, Lungy, um, and, and Hoops as well. So, um, yeah, we're just all feeding off each other here. Like Lars said, um, like we're all just trying to help each other. It's healthy competition here, but uh, there's a greater goal here. Um, 
and we're just competing every day in training, you know, obviously for that spot. But uh, regardless of whatever the team is, you know, uh, there's a bigger picture and we're trying to win the World Cup. As you talk about that age, the back row, I think you might be, if not the oldest in that back row group at 26. How, who's the kind of, is there someone who's just stepped up as a leader? How do you guys, what do you guys do to kind of bounce off each other? And just can you give some examples. Yeah, it's new for me, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> no, um, yeah, I think I'm, um, yeah, being the oldest in the back row now, so a lot of the time it's been, obviously, um, hoops when he was here for us, so um, I think we've we've taken a lot from previous guys that have been older than us in the back row uh, the last two years, so um, I think for us we're just all sort of trying to help each other, like I said before, we're all, we're all playing a part in everything in terms of attack and defence, um, there's at least one of us in, in those sort of leadership groups within the attack and defence, so um, just trying to have a voice and help each other out throughout this campaign. Um, it's going to help our back row go really well. Last couple online, thanks, Scott. I was going to say, Rob and Balakai as well, what socially you guys been doing? It seems like there's been a few, you know, trips to the Eiffel Tower and just sort of embracing Paris and what it is. Has Eddie been pretty relaxed about that since you've landed? Um, you take us inside what the lads have been doing outside the footy field. Yeah, uh, we we landed Friday. Um, obviously, you got jet lag, and then uh, you got to acclimatise to to the time difference. So, um, I think the boys we had a first, you know, a couple of days recovery, and boys have been enjoying uh, the sightseeing when we when we have times off. But um, you know, when we're off, we're off, and then when we're on, we're on. We've you know we've ha we've had a few tough sessions already, and in this heat, it's it's hard and. Um, you know, boys are enjoying it, and and it's just making training even even better because, you know, if we want to continue to to have that flexibility and that and that time to to go out and enjoy what Paris has to offer, then, you know, we've got to show up and we've got to we've got to train hard and, and show that, you know, this is what we're here for first. So, um, yeah, don't get me wrong, the boys have gone to the Eiffel Tower. I think um, a few boys have had a few uh, cute picnics together, but. Um, it's it's definitely at the forefront of our mind that we're here to to win this world cup and and it starts now